Hey, fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. If you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. This is Math with a Purpose. What I have here is a Victoria, Australia standardized math test. I'll put a, put a link to it in the description. It's a standardized math test. Um, they're all kind of the same. No calculator. Timing is kind of key. The best way to watch these videos is have paper and pencil in front of you. Do a few of the problems and watch how I do the problems. So pause it, do the problems, unpause it, watch how I do it. There's a lot of tips and tricks to doing well on standardized math tests. And I've been working on these for quite a while, tutoring students um, do well on standardized math tests. Okay, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So pause the video, do a few of these, and then unpause it and watch how I do it. I'll also put some explanation of these topics in there in case uh, you've kind of forgotten them. So this one right here is the equation of a line and it's asking which could it be? Well, there's probably a few that it could be. So maybe the better way to do this one is the process of elimination. This is y equals mx plus b. b is the y-intercept and I can see the y-intercept right here is gonna be a negative value. So anything that it does not have a negative value, I just cross out. And then the next thing I know is this is a positive slope as I rise positive and run positive. Negative slope, negative slope. Only one that could possibly work is answer C. On to number three, which set of coordinates lie outside the shaded area? Well, the first one, zero, zero, is right here. Outside the shaded area, I certainly want to highlight that so I don't find one in the shaded area. And I think the best strategy on this one as well is the process of elimination. Clearly not it. Negative one, negative six. That's a third quadrant value. That can't be it. One, negative 50. That's obviously not going to be it. Put this down in the fourth quadrant. One, one is pretty close in that shaded area. And then finally, four, one is past that point and up one. And it, whoops, there it is right there. So that's the answer. Okay, number 34 here. We're trying to figure out the equation of the graph. Again, I see the y-intercept is four. All of these have a y-intercept of four, so it could be any of them. Then I next need to find the slope. The slope is rise over the run. So rise is my y value, so it rises from negative one to four. It rises five, and then it runs six down to zero, but it's going that way, so it's negative six. So the slope is rise over the run, or negative five, six, negative five, six plus four, and there's my solution right there. Okay, number 35 on the coordinate plane as well, the coordinate of the point of intersection. So this point of intersection, the second quadrant value, that'll be negative x, positive y, because I go over a negative and up a positive. So I'm looking for a negative positive, could be that one. Can't be that, can't be that, can't be that, can't be that. Only one solution that'll work right there. Question 36, I glance down on this and I see right away this is all about negatives and uh, keeping track of the negatives. So I have a negative three cubed. Negative three times negative three is positive nine. Positive nine times negative three is negative 27. So this value right here is negative 27 times a negative is positive 27. And there's my answer right there. Okay, number 37, laws of exponents. We're just simplifying this expression. Um, so we'll just start canceling. Five will go into five one times and a 10 twice. Four will go into itself one times into the eight twice. And then in the numerator, I have two times two of four. In my x values, I have x squared over x to the first. I subtract exponents. So 2 minus 1 gives me 1. And then y to the third over y to the first, 3 minus 1 gives me 2. So my answer is 4xy squared. Here it is. Same thing here. This is about the rules of exponents. Um, you have to do the parentheses first. So I'm just multiplying that 2 through the quantity. 3 to the 0, anything to the 0 power is equal to 1. So I have 1y to the power of 2. And that's just going to be y squared. And then here, this whole thing is to the power of 0. So this whole thing is a 1 times 2. So it's going to be 2 
times y squared, and there it is, answer C. Same thing here, uh, but I'm introduced into negative exponents here. So first the 3 goes into itself once, into the 6 twice. Then I have x to the negative 2 minus 3 is x to the negative 5. So x to the negative 5 in the numerator, I can make it positive by putting in the denominator. And then I have y squared minus negative 1, which is going to be plus 1, which would be y to the third. So I keep them all positive. So I have y to the third in the numerator, 2x to the fifth in the denominator. Number 40, what is not, so I certainly want to circle that, what is not the same as 32 to 3 fifths. So I'm just going to quickly glance at my answers, and I see 32 in all of them. So I think probably process of elimination, I multiply that through the exponent to get 32 and 3 fifths. Do the same thing here, 32 and 3 fifths. Um, this right here, I'm going to put that one on hold for a second. That, that'll probably work out, but it's going to be a few more steps. Let me go over here. 32 and 5 thirds, that is not the same, so I'm going to select that one. Uh, and I don't really have to do any more once I have my solution. So I don't want to spend a lot of time trying to solve these if I can find my solution. Okay, the next three problems refer to this Venn diagram right here. S is the students who play saxophone. F, the students who play flute. So I could see six of them don't do any of it. Five of them um, do both. Seven only the sax, ten only the flute. So what's the total number of students in the class? It's going to be the seven plus five, twelve, twenty-two, plus six, twenty-eight. And there it is, answer E. How many students learned neither saxophone nor flute? Well, that's going to be the ones outside of the Venn diagram, six. And how many students learned just the saxophone or the flute. So seven students learned only the saxophone, 10 learned only the flute, so it'll be 17, and that would be answer C. Okay, number 44, cumulative frequency. Um, this is a vocab question asking you whether or not you know what cumulative means. It means you're gonna add up sequential numbers. So there are no numbers on this chart, but you could see as the scores go up, the number of students who get that score goes up and then starts to go down. So I'm adding all these bars together. So if I just were to add, attach a number on there like 10, that would be 12. So my cumulative would be 10 plus 12, 22, plus 15, 37. So it's going up at an increasing rate, but then it starts coming down. It's still going up, but it's not going up at the same rate. The rate's coming down. So it's going to increase at an increasing rate, kind of hit a plateau. It's still going to increase, but increase at a decreasing rate. So this is kind of a question to see um, whether or not you could read graphs. So it's going to be answer A. This is saying it's going up, and then it's not going up anymore. This is uh, going up a little bit and then skyrocketing up, which it's not. There's a distinctive step here where there's not on that. And this is also a distinctive step. So the only one that makes sense is that the frequencies are going up and up at an increasing rate. Then once they get to a certain amount, they still keep going up, but they're increasing at a decreasing rate. So the answer is answer A. Okay, number 45, Jax. Dad invested some money. For every $12 he put in, he got $15 back. So I noticed that's a three increase, and three is 25% of 12, right? 3, 6, 9, 12, so that's 25%. If he put, invested 300, how much did he get back? We're well, gonna find 25% in that. I'm gonna cut it in half to get 150. Cut that in half to get 75. So 25% of that would be 375. And there's my answer right there. Okay, number 46. This whole quantity squared means this whole quantity times itself. So I have 2 root 5 minus root 2. Then I have to factor that out or FOIL it, where I multiply the first terms together. So 2 times 2 is 4. Root 5 times root 5 is 5. So 4 times 5 is 20. Then my inside terms, minus 2 
So it's going to be minus 2 root 2 times root 5 root 10 minus 2 root 2 root 10. And then finally, my last term, negative times negative will be positive. Root 2 times root 2 will just be 2. So it'll be 2. So I have 22 minus 4 root 10. So it's close, right? Here's 12. And then the inevitable, none of these. So this is actually the correct answer. None of these here. Rationalize and simplify. Before I even do 47, I'm just going to glance down at all of my possibilities. So rationalize means get rid of the radical in the denominator. So I could do that by multiplying by a factor of 1. I'll multiply by root 3 over root 3. That's going to give me 4 root 15 all over 3. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. Uh, I don't see any of those there. And I don't, this can't get any more simplified. So again, this is going to be none of these. Here I have x divided by y plus z. So I have x divided by y. The way I divide fractions is I multiply by the reciprocal. So I have x times the reciprocal of y. That has to happen first because multiplication comes before addition. And then I add z to it, and that's 3 fourths. So this is going to be 3 fourths plus 3 fourths. The way I add fractions, I keep that common denominator to get 6 over 4, or 1 and a half. And 4 goes into there one time with 2 left over. And there's my answer right there, answer A. A few more here, another quadratic. Again, I multiply my first terms together to get 3a times 3a, 9a squared, minus 15ab, plus 15ab. So it's going to be a perfect square where that middle term drops out. And my last term is negative times positive, negative 25b squared. And there it is. There's a quick distractor. That's not b squared. So I have 9a squared minus 25b squared. There's my solution. Factorize and simplify. I'm going to glance down here and look at some of my solutions. I do see a common factor of 3 in all of those terms, and three of my answers have that 3 pulled out. So I'm going to pull that 3 out first, leaving me with a squared plus a minus 6. A lot easier to factor it that way. I still have that 3 out front. Factors of a squared are an a and an a. Factors of a 6 or a 3 and a 2 to give me an A. One has to be positive, one negative to give me a negative there. Um, the middle term is positive, so the larger term has to be positive. So there it is. I look down. 3, A plus 3, A minus 2. There's my solution there. Number 51 here. Um, I can't do any canceling until I have things multiplied together, so i got to factor first. I'm going to just look at this first term. Here's the perfect square. I'm going to factor it first to get x minus 3, x plus 3. In the denominator, I have a common term of 4, so I'm going to pull out 4 out, leaving me with x minus 3. I have a division sign, which is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. And this is in a quantity x plus 3. So that x minus 3 will cancel with that x minus 3. That x plus 3 will cancel with that quantity x plus 3. I'm left with a 2 over a 4, or 1 half. And there's my. All right, question 52. Uh, I see a right angle, right triangle trig. I look down here, it's all right triangle trig. Uh, I think first thing I'll do is I see that these two angles right here have to add up to 90. They're complementary, so that has to be 18 degrees. If I'm looking for x, I think I would use sine. So I would say sine at 18 degrees is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, x over 15. I multiply both sides by 15. And I could see that x, the missing side, is 15 sine at 18. And I could see it right there. All right, number 53, the turning point of the graph. Well, that's going to be my turning point, my vertex right there. Again, a third quadrant value, negative, negative. So I'm only looking for 
uh, solutions that are negative negative in the third quadrant and there's only one? Answer E. Number 54, a number x is subtracted from 2 times the square. I don't know if I could just go down here and, and find it through a process of elimination. I think I'm just going to transfer this sentence into an equation. A number x is subtracted, so I have x is subtracted from 2 times its square. So there's its square. 2 times its square, and then I subtract x from it, is 45. So there's my equation there. And let's see if I have that anywhere here. There it is. Answer C. All right, number 55. Find the point intersection of these two graphs. I'm not seeing a quick way as I scan the answers, but I see y is equal to that and y is equal to that. So those two things have to be equal to each other. And then I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides to set it equal to 0. So I have negative x squared plus 3x minus 2. I'm going to multiply 3 by a negative 1 to get x squared minus 3x plus 2. And then I can factor that as x minus 2, x minus 1. So there are two answers for x here, either a positive 2 or a positive 1. Let me see if there's only one solution like that. There is. This is the only one where x is 2 and 1. I don't have to take it and plug it back in and solve for y. Okay, this is for 56, 57, and 58. They won't all fit on my screen, so I'll scroll back and forth. Uh, use the graph to answer the questions for the next three. It's price depending on weight. So 56, which shop gave the worst value for money? So that means a high price, low weight. So that would have to be that answer V right there, or shop V. Okay, 57, which two shops charge the same price per kilogram? Well, let's just put some numbers on here and see if we can figure this out. Let's call this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I don't know, but you know, you, you could assign 5, 10, 15, 20. So if we do it that way, I can see this shop charge 10 bucks for 3 kilograms. This shop charge 5 bucks for 5 kilograms. This shop charge 20 bucks for 2 kilograms. And then this shop right here charge 10 bucks for 1 kilogram. So X and Z charge the same price. So that's going to be X and Z right there, answer A. And then on number 58, which shop would you get three times the amount of sugar for the same price as shop Z? Let's say this is five kilograms. You would be paying $10 for it. This would be 10, 15 kilograms, three times as much weight for the same price. So Y would be your answer to number 58. So it would be answer D. All right, last couple of problems here. Please comment below on how you did on this test. Hopefully you paused it and did these problems. It's a standardized math test that um, the province of Victoria put out in Australia. You, it's not only time, so you've got to really have a good strategy to go through it. Sometimes watching me do them and the strategies I use will help you out. But you really got to do a lot of practice problems like this. Again, I'll put a link to this test in the description. Um, I did a video for the first half, and this is the second video right here. And if you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. This is a practical math channel. It's math with a purpose. Um, and doing well on standardized tests is really essential for kind of any career move. It's really the best way to see whether somebody has a logical thought process. All right, number 59 here. I notice it's a right triangle, and I'm solving for x. So I know it's going to be the Pythagorean theorem. I don't know if I could just plug in a few values and see if it's going to be an easy one. Um, or I could do the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to just start with this 3 and see if it works. Plug it in there. 4 squared plus 6 squared. Does that equal 8 squared? 16 and 36 is 52. That does not work. Now I'm going to plug in that 6. 7 plus 9 should equal 11 squared. Uh, 49 and 81, 49 and 81, that does not equal 121. I'll try the 5, so now I'm going to plug a 5 in here to get 6 plus 8. 
should equal 10. And I notice that's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. 36 plus 64 equals 100. So I can see that is my correct answer there. I could do a whole quadratic, x plus 1 squared plus x plus 3 squared, but that's where it is going to take a lot of time. All right, number 60 here. Um, go ahead and factorize this, multiple choice. Um, I could factor that, but I don't think it's going to work out too easy, so I think I'm just going to do a process of elimination. So I'm going to look at answer A. AB, there's that, minus AC, minus BC, plus C squared. There's no C squared, so that's not going to work. B squared, there it is, plus AB, that's there, plus BC, that is not there. Here I have AB minus AC plus B squared minus BC. That's the one right there. There's the correct answer. If I have more time, I could check that it's not the others, or I could just move along on this. I sure hope this help, uh, video helped through this practice math test. If you want to get good at any standardized math test, you just got to do a lot of them. Uh, keep practicing, and, and you'll get better at them. It doesn't really matter if you're studying for a college entrance exam or um, a trades union exam. They're always kind of the same idea. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it.